ladies and gentlemen i've been told to check out this video i think i think about six months ago for some reason i didn't check it out then and i kind of forgot about it but today i'll be checking this out the tower of london puppies from what the person told me it was uh about uh uh past the west soldiers or something like that so without wasting any more time let's get right into it in 2014 artist paul cummins and tom piper along with historic royal palace royal palaces had a vision to fill the moat of the tower of london with 888,246 ceramic puppies one puppy for each bridge each british and colonial fatality during the first world war wow okay that is nice that is great let's see what it is this, this is incredible so this is like a tourist destination now or something whoa 21,688 people volunteered to install the puppies wow nice five million people traveled from around the world to see them i thought as much it should be a, a tourist destination Hopefully, any day I visit the UK, I'll be able to visit this as well. I hope you don't pay money to see it, right? Or do you pay money to see it? So even if it's the pay, I hope it's not that much. I was just in awe of how many people were here, honestly. Um, it's just really nice to see the support from the whole city. Um, Such a lovely way to commemorate it. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Magic. Yeah really moving. It is very moving. Tremendous. Whether it's young people or old people, they've come in their hundreds, they've come in their thousands, and they've stood on the, um, behind the railings, looking wow. down into the moat, really from early in the morning until late at night. And I think why it's caught the imagination of the country is this particular number of 888,246. Mm. We fought in mass armies, but they were individual soldiers. And each poppy represents an individual life lost and a family shattered. I think people can understand that. My son was in the army as well. He served in Ireland, he served in Bosnia. And when I see that, I'm just really, really grateful that he came back. My mother is from Canada and her, I believe, grandfather was a spy in the war. And so my mom wears a poppy every year. But... Yeah, that, that's what it's about. It's, you know, it's appreciation. It's always a little bit of appreciation. I mean, my father died from his injuries from the Second World War. My mum lost four brothers during the First World War too, so obviously that's where my passion comes from, but we're all in the same boat. You know, you have that four or five years, wasn't it? This would be London, isn't it? So, and I love London. So. And so I think it, it's become a, a kind of a place of pilgrimage, not, not, not just a place where you see, see this artwork or not just a, a place of, of, of commemoration because it's here. It's just become a kind of national focus. It started us asking questions about who, who we are. What, what are we doing when we're commemorating? How, how warlike are we as a nation? The thing about this is it reminds you that these people were human beings, just as you are a human being, just as the, mili you know, the military personnel are human beings. And, and that, that interconnection, yeah, it, it, it's, it's kind of everything. It breaks down the barriers uh, wow. of them versus us, or uh, just a vast quantity of numbers. And I was at the closing sort of ceremony today, and, and the last poppy got put in and you, by a little boy, and you think, that's a life, and you look around, and there's more than 800,000 wow. more lives, and it this really, so it does hit you. Man. Sometimes you look at the vastness of it, and it's beautiful, but hard to comprehend. And then this one poppy goes down, and you think, okay, yeah, this is, this is rather, this is rather a lot. Yeah. We've had so many volunteers, so many people making the poppies, the whole of the Yeoman Water staff, the HRP staff, the number of people involved has been enormous. And I think, um, un unusually for a large artwork, it doesn't, isn't wow. then dominated by a single person or a single uh, ego of an, an artist. And in a sense, though I, me and Paul treat ourselves and believe that we are artists and this is an artwork, because we've been very open about it, I think we've allowed so many other people into it to take ownership of it. Nobody that you've met on the project has been a bad seed. It's been a bunch of love, a load of stories that you really love to hear. 
and just the community has come so t- I'm from the America from the US and the the UK spirit here has made me really proud that I moved here <laughs> I've been here seven years and it I love the spirit of this project it's just been amazing amazing <laughs> so people are able to bring their own family stories to it um, grandparents can explain to their grandchildren how they connect into into this story of our nation you just have to remember I mean they gave their lives so that we can live in peace today and you know what greater gift can you give than your life I think it's very important to remember I think it's a good thing because we're remembering people who've done something for us and who lost their lives while doing that and the least we can do obviously is remember them we've invited members of do they put their names on the puppies? Because I know I'm not sure that that happened because you can't really know all the names of the people that died. And in that situation, you may look at it like, does it really have the impact? Because your your name is not there, so you're basically just being put as a statistic. I don't know. Like I'm trying to be a bit cynical right now, but. I, I I I shouldn't be I shouldn't be in this kind of video. This video shows uh, um, great appreciation to people that sacrifice their lives, and their names may not be mentioned. Their names may not be written there. Um, but at the end of the day, <sighs> even if their names were written, would they be here to see it? So I don't really know. I don't really know. Um, I shouldn't really be saying too much about this because. I may not understand it fully. However, I do understand that this is a very, very great gesture to people that sacrifice themselves. Public to send in the names of a loved one who lost their lives in the okay, festival. Send in the names. And we've yeah, read out okay. about 200 every evening. And we've done that every evening from the 5th of August through until today. Wow. I read the last list at 11 o'clock on the 11th. Lieutenant MJD's Victoria Cross. Damn. The installation is going to live on in a new, different way uh, in the next four years. You know, that there's the first thing, which is that them all going out to the general public, the people who bought them, and then having their own kind of tiny fragment of the installation. And then there are the two sculptural pieces, which have been kindly bought for the nation, and we can take to various different locations to create some some new installations relating to new buildings or new landscapes that can create a different kind of narrative on a on a smaller scale. And then the fact those are going to the Imperial War Museum. Museum and will be there you know for a long time as a, a focus for commemoration. I've just come out of the um, of the volunteers office and there's what we call the measles map which is um, a little red Mizzle dot map. on every part of the map where the volunteers have come from and it goes from Singapore to Iceland from Guinea Sierra Leone to, okay. the, to the west coast of the of the United States it's an absolutely incredible geographic spread and I think that the, wow, the, the names nice, on the roll of honor every night have come from all over the Commonwealth countries and then these poppies are going off around the world and what we really want to happen is that we want to we want to send these poppies home now the the soldiers never never got to go home but you know a lot of them will wow this is beautiful this they is so great old, as we who are left grow old age shall not weary them nor the years condemn i think it- Wow, this is uh, this is a very very like every time I watch videos like this, when I see um, human beings being depicted as a bunch of numbers and um, a bunch of puppies, like in this video, it's always very very hard for me because most of the time when I think about these wars, World War One, World War Two, or any any other war that has gone on in the past, a lot of these people, mostly men, would not have chosen to do this i do understand that every time it looks like oh we are being patriotic let's go and fight for our country if you go and investigate a lot of these men just did it out of peer pressure some people most a lot of them were most are done it out of peer pressure because let's be honest if you are a man here if you are a man and your country is in danger of being taken over i think in world war one germany were trying to uh take over britain Oh, am I getting it correctly? In that situation, if you are a man, a young man, most of all, and you you decide to sit out, first of all, you probably know. You first of all, you probably not even be allowed to sit out. That's the first thing. The second thing is, 
even if you were allowed to sit out, you would probably be mocked. You would probably, probably be mocked to oblivion. To the, to the end of your life, you, you'd be mocked as a coward, as a spineless fool. That's why you... So, and that, and, and, and in that situation, you have no other choice than to take up arms as well. So, most of the time, when I see things like this, I'm, 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 I'm always very touched because I could be one of these people if I'm in a country that maybe goes to war or is trying to defend the country and I, as a young man, has to take up arms. If I don't, I'll either be forced... I'll, I'll be called a coward for the rest of my life, so it's just it's just a bit it's a bit difficult. It's a bit um, hard to take a lot of the times when I see videos like this. But it's great that the, this kind of gesture was made. I, I, I don't know whether this place will be here forever because I think these men deserve that at the very least. You know, I, I think they deserve that at the very least. I hope that place is there forever. It's never disrupted for some nonsense political gain because what I've noticed in the West is a lot of the times things that happened in the past, people always try to brush it off as some kind of nonsense that should be forgotten, that should be overlooked, especially if it's not something that aligns with the current political climate. So I hope this place is not touched by some political or whatever that is trying to gain some points in some other avenue. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the reaction. What do you think? Let me know what I think. What do you think down in, down in the comments? We should try the British people that may, be, that may be watching this video. I would like to know how do you feel about this? Do you have any family members, any um, forefathers that were part of this um, 880 something thousand men? I would like to know down in the comments. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.